core truth. Core truth. Uh, Dan Willer is a member of the group and he posted the other day, how do I hold my core truth and not absorb other people's frequencies? All right, I think that that's, uh, there he is, Dan. What's up, man, how you doing? So that was a really good question. Dan, by the way, thank you for that question. And uh, this is like the first time this has happened where somebody asked a question and then I took that question and I made it alive. I used to do it in my old group a lot. It was it was really amazing because uh, there were even days where I woke up and I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about. And then somebody smart asked a question. I was like, oh, I'll talk about that, that's great. So you did that for me, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, here's your answer. Actually, a lot of people already gave you a really good answer. I'm just gonna kind of riff on their answers because those are the answers. Um, okay, so how do you hold on to your core truth and not absorb others' frequencies? And Dan, at the end, I'm gonna kind of tie this into business, but you'll see how I'm tying it into my business as I go. So uh, so here we go. So let's talk first about what he means by that in case you're like, woo, right? Um, how, do you not, how do you hold on to your core truth? Meaning what is right for you to thine own self be true. I have to be like, I have to be me and I have to be about me. Uh, if you saw my live the other day, I was talking about the cups and how, or, or like being on the airplane where you have to put your mask on first before you put somebody else's mask on, or, you know, you can't fill other people's cups if your cup is not full. So your core truth is taking care of yourself so that you have energy, so you have uh, the ability to help other people or to do something for other people, or just to be of value in general. You know, it's not always about helping people, but just to be a valuable member of society. If you're not being true to yourself, then you're gonna be really worn down and uh, not have the energy for it. So, okay. Uh, so a lot of times we can be influenced or even intimidated by other people, the people around us. This could be uh, family members, it could be friends, it could be uh, people in my group, it could be uh, people you don't even know on Facebook who you're just nervous they're gonna say something about, people you went to high school with and now you don't wanna post things on Facebook because you're nervous about what they're gonna think of you. Uh, it could be clients in business, right, or customers, or it could be anyone, anyone that you interact with or that you mentally interact with, maybe you don't even interact with them, you're just nervous what they think. Anyway, we can be influenced by, uh, as, as Dan said, absorbing other people's frequencies, right? They have their own energy and they have what they want out of you. So you don't have to do what they want for you to do for them. You have to do what you want to do for you. And then if it's a value to them, they can stick around. That's kind of... That's kind of my mantra, right? Did you understand that? So people want you to do things for, for you. Let's say you run a business and you have clients or customers that want you to do something for them. Well, just because a customer comes or a client comes and says, hey, can you do this thing for me? Just because they ask doesn't mean you have to say yes if you don't want to do it or if they're not a good fit for you or whatever, right? You have to decide like, first I have to decide, is this good for me? And if it is, then I can be of value to you. But if it's not good for me, how am I gonna be of any value to you? I'm gonna resent you, I'm not gonna like this, I'm gonna wish that you went away. Uh, all of those things. So sometimes people can actively impose their frequencies on you. They could, they could be a bully or they could just really think, oh man, I don't know why you did that, I think you should do it this way, right? Uh, that's that selfish thing where people want you to do things their way. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and that, but then more often than not, it's sort of passive where we don't want to offend somebody or we're worried about what other people are going to think. And we can really pick up on other people's frequencies that way. Have you ever like posted something on Facebook that you're really proud of and then like maybe somebody gives an offhand comment and you're just like, ooh, like, wow, I really wish you didn't say that and it kind of ruined the whole thread, thanks, right? Things like that, it's, it's they maybe didn't even mean anything by it, but now you're sort of like, second guessing yourself uh, gee maybe i shouldn't do this maybe i shouldn't have posted that maybe i shouldn't think that way maybe i shouldn't be into this thing because those people aren't into this thing so that's that's what we mean by absorbing other people's frequencies but your core truth is just being you just do you so we had some people that answered his question and uh, i just want to give a shout out to ricky and shin and catherine and laura and tracy for uh, giving some decent answers there a decent meaning good i don't know why i said decent that's lame uh, anyway um so ricky uh ricky was the first to answer and he just said he, he was a good one right um instead of worrying about uh you taking on other people's frequencies figure out what yours is and project it 
This way, when you leave the house or when you interact in business or anything like that, you are now projecting your frequency and the people around you will will react or respond in kind. You're, you'll be the you'll be the one who's controlling the vibration of the meeting or the or the energy level of the group or something like that. And uh, I'm just going to riff on that for a moment because that was a really good answer. And it's pretty much what I did here today. Um, last Saturday, I mentioned that I was going to be making some changes in the group because of some things I figured out about myself. And I did all of that today. And I'm sorry for blowing up your Facebook. And, and <laughs> you probably got like a thousand notifications. That Bobby changed the description. Bobby changed the name. Bobby changed the picture. And, you know, you can't, you can't do all those things in one shot. Each one is a different thing. So I apologize for all those notifications if you got them. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's like I, I, I had been... Sometimes you got to dive into something and then just figure out where you're supposed to be. This is a little bit off topic, but it's it kind of goes hand in hand in a second if you bear with me. So I, I wasn't, I knew I wanted to do something in this spiritual realm. I wasn't 100% sure what, and I had been kind of hemming and hawing a YouTube channel, a this, a this, a, right? all of these different things that I wanted to do. And oh, maybe it should be for these kinds of people, or maybe it should be this kind of content. And without really doing anything, all I was doing was thinking about it. And finally, I just, you know, I, I just got to start. And I started, I put a Facebook group together and I opened it last Tuesday. It's been six days, right? It hasn't even been a week yet. Tomorrow will be one week since I opened the group. But uh, I opened the group and then, and then immediately I realized, not immediately, but within a couple of uh, days, I realized, oh, gee, I, I, I may have gone a little bit too general here. And, uh, and this is where it ties into to this topic, because my core truth is more about artistry and using my artistic talents uh, to, to, uh, to light up the world and or you know, whatever you like. And, and I realized that there were some people that I was attracting from the original message that didn't really fit with that. One of the big things for me is I'm a branding guy, so I like to teach people not only how to find their core genius, not only how to tap into that and to use it, and to, but also how to sort of present it, how to brand it, how to put it out there. And the people who really want to put their core genius out there, to me, are artists. Um, yeah, there are plenty of entrepreneurs with core talents and things that want to put it out there too, but this this is what lights me up, you know, is talking to musicians and artists and, and uh, creators of all kinds. So it was very important to me to stick to my core truth. Once I realized that, I was like, ah, I know it's going to look a little weird and silly, but I need to change this on day six. <laughs> right. So uh, and I did because that was my core truth. So how do you hold on to your core truth and not absorb the frequencies of others? Uh, you just you just do it. You just decide, well, I know this is right for me and I'm just going to do this thing. I'm pretty sure, because luckily there weren't 10,000 people in the group yet, there were a little less than 300. I'm pretty sure 40, 50, 60, 100 maybe aren't gonna be into this, but there's nothing I can do about that. I can't make everybody be an artist. I can't force everybody to conform, but more importantly, I can't conform to the handful of people that joined already based on my original thought when suddenly I realized, oh, I, I did this a little bit wrong. I need to slightly adjust this and focus it and narrow the niche a little bit. And that's how I stick to my core truth. I just act upon it. Um, sometimes though, and these were where the other answers to your question, uh, Dan, come in. Uh, sometimes though, we don't really, know what our core truth is and and there were a few uh, things other people said that that helped to sort of help you figure it out right uh for example i'm, I'm reading off my uh I'm, i keep looking down because I'm, I'm looking at my notes here to, to remember which 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 ones to say first uh so for example you need to observe yourself if if you're if you're not sure like well what is my core truth then you need to spend time observing yourself and to really uh, uh, dig into who you are. So Dan, I might not be talking to you. You might know what your core truth is. But right now I'm talking more generally. 
And so, uh, you know, sometimes you need to just spend time being quiet and observing. Sometimes you need to learn how to follow your intuition. Maybe this requires meditating. Maybe this requires just getting out of a situation so that you can think about it without other people around you and then come back to it. Um, and Catherine had a really good idea where you could play, make it a detective game where every time you're interacting with people, you could ask, like, is this... The thing I want or is this the thing they want you know there's no right or wrong answer just because you're doing something other people want doesn't mean you can't change it later but if you keep getting if you get into the habit of asking yourself that question hmm, is this is this my truth or is this their truth am I just doing this for me or am I doing this for them once you get into asking that question all the time you begin to get better and better and better at finding the answer until all of a sudden you realize no that's them I'm not doing that that's me I'll do that you know, and that's kind of the point I've gotten up to where I know what my core truth is when I see it. And I know what's not my core truth when I see it. And as soon as I opened this group and I did like two or three daily fuels, I realized, oh, I'm not I'm not loving where this is going. I, I thought I'd love this more, but I think I'm going to I, I'm missing this part that's very important to me. And, and as soon as I knew that. I knew exactly what I had to do. Well, I got to change it. That's it. I have to change it because I am doing this for me. And the people, because I'm doing this for me and not to sound like a, you know, an idiot, a dick, but I'm doing it for me because this creates the most value for me. And then when I am this fulfilled, then I can be a value to you. And you being you if it's a value to you, not you if it's not. You might be watching this going like, well, I don't like this new direction. And in which case, I understand that. You know, you're not an artist, you're not a whatever, and, and this isn't your thing anymore. Um, and you're allowed to leave. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You know, no one's forced to stay in this group. But I have to make it the group that's going to be something I can do for the long term because I'm the only one else to show up every day. Nobody else has to. Everybody, you can show up today and then not come back for a month and be like, oh yeah, I remember this group. This was great. Uh, but I have to be here every day. So if it's not something that's going to really thrill me, then it's not going to be of any value to anybody. Uh, and then finally, some other people mentioned uh, setting an intention before interacting. So first, observe, follow your intuition, and play that detective game where you figure out like what is uh, my core truth. Then set an intention before you go out that you're going to stick to your core truth. Well, I know, let's say, for example, you go into a client meeting because, uh, Dan, you specifically asked about business, right? So let's say you're going into a business meeting or something like that, and you know this person's going to want me to do this thing. Uh, they only have so much money or whatever. And... Uh, you can go into it knowing that, well, my core truth is this. I do this and I do this and I do this. I do not do these other two things. And if they ask me to do them, my answer is going to be no, because the last time somebody asked me to do that, I said yes, because I didn't want to hurt the feelings. Or I didn't want to lose the client or I wanted to check, right? And, uh, and uh, I ended up resenting it. It didn't, it didn't go well. It wasn't fulfilling to me. It wasn't my best work. Um, I, I want to just give my best work, you know? So. I would always set an intention before I go into any situation. Uh, and if you're a fan of Abraham Hicks, they call it segment intending. I'm now doing this thing. I want it to go like this. Uh, I, I, you know, and, you, and it could be general. I just want it to be a pleasant meeting. I want it to be a productive meeting. I want the, this relationship to move forward uh, so that everybody's happy. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, I want them to pay me this much money and it only takes me this much time. To, you, we don't control that stuff. You know, set some general intentions of how you want to feel. I want to come out of here feeling energized and I want to be able to do something. I want to be able to do my best work for these people. And that's it. Set that intention. Then you'll be able to do what Ricky said, is project your core truth, your intentions into the, you walk into a meeting, you walk into a show, you walk a showcase, you present your work to somebody. If you do all that stuff pre doing that, now you're walking in, blasting your energy out there, right? And you're gonna be unmistakable. If I didn't do these things, I wouldn't be able to get up on this live and do what I'm doing now. I, otherwise, I'd be like this. Uh, so the core truth is, you know, I, right? I, 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 nobody would want to watch that. I don't know that. It, I don't know why anybody wants to watch this. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. You know, so observe yourself, figure out what your core truth is, and if you're not sure, then constantly ask yourself, like, is this it or is this their truth? Is this my truth or is this their truth? And after a while, you'll get to know what your truth is. Then, before you go into situations, set an intention. And then when you're in the situation, 
consciously be projecting your core truth. Remember what you said to yourself, I want to do this and I don't want to do that, you know, uh, or I, I want this group to be for spiritual artists and I want to be talking about your core genius and lighting up your talent and sharing it with the world and attracting an audience and I want to be talking to creative people. That's my core truth. And if that's not you, then I'm sorry. But if it is you, great, let's hang out. That's it. That's how you do it. So I'm going to stop right there and go to some comments. Okay, uh, we got Dan. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it for this. Especially as an empathetic person, we perceive things to a much higher level. Yeah, well, that's that's the spiritual part of this, right? The, the spiritual part makes it harder and easier, right? It's uh, harder sometimes because if we're lazy, and we're not doing all this work. This sounds like a lot of work, right? Doesn't it? You gotta, you gotta figure it out for yourself. Then you gotta remember to set intentions. Then you gotta project it when you're in, when you're in a thing. Uh, it's work. Everybody else just lives by default. Have you noticed that? They're just banging around doing their thing, and they they don't ever think of stuff like this. But they're also not empathetic, and they're not picking up on other people's frequencies. So they're just like a lot of people can be just asleep right they're just going through life doing their thing and they're it it's doesn't seem to affect them as much so how come for us it seems to affect us so more i have a theory on that I, i'm not prepared to talk about this theory but i'm going to remember that because i want to i want to uh empathy rick just ricky just said empathy is what gives you the ability to feel music oh that's cool i'm going to get back to that one in a second um I, I, think about our energy like a sine wave, right? I think the people who don't do this work, who don't understand what we're talking about when it comes to, uh, you know, tapping into your core genius or setting intentions for your meeting or your day or your whatever, um, I think that they kind of float around in a, in, in a very, uh, what we call it low frequency, but literally low frequency, or in this case, I'm making it more like a low amplitude. Like if you just imagine like the, the height of this wave is not very big, that's amplitude. Frequency is how close together, but that's harder to do with my hands. So just imagine frequency is this, right? But we are like this. <laughs> <laughs> right and so we can run the gamut of this and if we forget if they forget to work on it meaning they just never work on it the most they're going to do is float around in this tiny little range of frequencies but we forget and what happens is we go plummeting down to the bottom and then we have to remember and go ah shit and and do the work and let me meditate for 17 hours and do whatever i have to do go for a walk and do, do whatever right let me sleep um so that we can get back on a higher frequency. It's work once you know this stuff. And the trick is to just not forget to do the work. Uh, let's go. Dan then said, uh, Ricky said, look at it like being on stage with a smile for the audience full time. Oh, that's cool. All right. Uh, so this is why this is why I also like spiritual artists because we can pick some metaphors and just run with them, right? Being on stage, doing stuff like that. So I'm a lead singer, and I understand if I don't do all this work before I get on stage, I'm gonna forget my lines. I'm gonna uh, my lyrics. I mean, I'm gonna forget the my cues, all of that stuff. But when I am. It's so much easier, right, to get into the zone and then uh, look at it like being on stage with a smile for the audience full time. So yeah, if you can just imagine always being on stage, if, if you're a performer, a lot of us don't do stage work, but right, if, if you can imagine that, just always being on, then carry that zone that, let me, I'm, I'm thinking of an analogy and I'm, and I'm halfway through it in my brain, but it, the words didn't come out of my mouth. So you're like, what? Uh, when, when you go on stage or when you're painting or you're doing your art, you know how you get in the zone, right? Well, if we can learn how to sort of whatever we do to build up to that, to get into the zone, if we could do that before we do other things, then we can carry that with us in everything. It's work. It really, really is. And it comes easier for us to do it in our in our art because it's just a natural ability, but we can we can learn that we can take that skill and practice it and practice it and practice it and then apply it to other things in our life. And before you know it, you're doing it everywhere. So um, I think, let's try that. 
Uh, performing on stage, I like it, yeah. Uh, Dan says, in my case, as long as I don't try to understand, I know what my core truth is. As long as I don't try to understand. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, sometimes, uh, here's what I think you mean by that. Sometimes, I, I have a question, I'm not clear about something, and, and I'll try to logically think of the answer. Well, it's probably this. And then, and then if I'm really not working on it I'll like run with that answer and I'll build a thing and I'll do all this stuff and then like a day or a week will go by and I'll realize that wasn't it <laughs> right um that wasn't the case with this group I I really took some time to uh to not try to get quiet and to to to, to land upon the idea I I landed on the idea of a Facebook group and I was happy with that. It, to me, it was more like some of the details were just a little off. But again, it was like, uh, maybe I was trying hard, too hard. Oh, I wanna start a Facebook group and I want it to be spiritual. Oh, light workers, I'll just do that. And then I just made it work uh, until I realized this doesn't work. So yeah, you're absolutely right. In my case, as long as I don't try to understand, I know what my core truth is. So then, so then don't try. Um, Observe, right? That's what we said before. Observe, follow your intuition. But how do you follow your intuition? Your intuition knows the answer, but you can't really hear or feel your intuition when you're logically trying to consciously think of the answer. That's that's when you need that. For me personally, I need to go for a walk, be quiet. I need to meditate, be quiet. And if I'm really low down in my frequencies, I need to just like watch a movie and, and or something and just completely take my mind off of things until all of a sudden I'll uh, get a burst of inspiration. And, and finally, that's when I know that's my thing. Stephanie says, hi. Hi, how you doing? Uh, Ricky says, empathy is what gives you the ability to feel music. Oh, I read that one, yeah. Empathy is what gives you the ability to feel music. I, I, I like empathy. I agree with you with that. Um, music to me, I think also that music helps people who aren't as this as we are feel empathy, uh, right? I think that music is a universal thing that sort of like touches people. Uh, I think art, vis visual art can do the same. Um, uh, on different things. That's why I really like uh, the creative side of things is because there's just something in the making and the creation of whether it's a visual thing or an, or an audible thing or a combination of the two that touches people even if they don't understand that it's touching them or why, but they carry something away with it. And I think one of those things is, is empathy. But you're right. Ricky, it works the opposite way that empathy, because we have empathy so much, it's what gives us the ability to do what we do. Dan Willis says, yes. Jason Press, <laughs> hey Jason, how you doing buddy? Uh, setting that intention and doing your work. This is we can learn and grow. This is uh, how we can learn and grow. Uh, yeah, setting the intention and doing the work. I, I can't say this enough because, I, and, and by the way, I'm not an expert in executing this I, I I understand the concept and when I remember to do it it works um, but I am just as likely to forget to do all this work as I am to get up here and tell you this because I'm you know I'm also a 3d human person that's we forget right uh, here's a little bit about me I'm married I have two kids they're awesome they're upstairs my daughter uh, her room is right there so I don't know if you heard her walking earlier a dog and two cats one of them just pees on things because she's an idiot and uh you know there's just things that can make me go ah and then before you know it it's four o'clock and i and i forgot to do a lot of this work that's one of the reasons i really like this group is because uh, by setting myself up to do a daily live like this it sort of structures things for me more and i have to think ahead earlier in the day if i did when i don't have this um I don't always do that. And before you know it, it's like six o'clock at night and I, and I didn't get to anything. I forgot to meditate and I didn't do uh, this project or, or something like that. Um, yeah, so setting that intention and doing your work, that's how we can learn and grow. That definitely, uh, Jason. Dan says, metaphors are great. Metaphor, I love metaphors. Uh, 
I don't know why you said that. I probably, did I say something? This happens. If you're new on my live, um, people write in the comments. I read the comments after my thing, and then I read the comments, and I don't remember what the heck I said that made you say what you're saying, and now I'm saying things that I don't understand because I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Stephanie, your universal mic is always on. Hmm. That's cool. That's an interesting, uh, right? So anything that you're thinking, anything that you're, uh, you're always projecting, and the universe hears it, your, your universal mic is always on, and the universe is always hearing it and reflecting it back. Um, and that could be, in, in, the, in the context of our conversation today, it could be in the other people around you. So if, if you are projecting something that's not your core truth, the people around you are going to project not your core truth back at you, and you may, if you haven't been doing the work to keep your frequency high, you may get caught up in that and uh, agree to do something that you don't want to do or find yourself in a situation that you're just like, how the heck did I get here? Uh, it's not fun. And usually, you know, it's not life-threatening or anything like that and can be reversed, but it sometimes can be frustrating and annoying and, and or embarrassing or whatever but you know you're right your universal mic is always on very good uh dance is flow 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 and melinda hi melinda how are you nice to see you vibrations and frequency yes uh that's what we're talking about um okay melinda you get the booby prize if you're the last comment any other comments otherwise i'm going to wrap them up by the way if you type in a comment it usually takes a few seconds for it to or you know, like 20 seconds. I'm not sure how long, um, but I don't think you hit it and I see it. I think it takes a few extra seconds or something like that. Anyway, guys, that's it. Next week, I'll be changing the group name again and it'll be for uh, Puppeteers and and we'll go on from there. Oh, J J I'm only kidding about that. Jason says, uh, intuition is your higher self speaking to you. If you set that voice aside, it can lead to a mental struggle inside. So learn to tune in and trust the universal pull. Yeah, dude, that intuition is your higher self speaking to you. By the way, I'm not going to get into this right now, but, uh, you know, forget the by the way. Uh, there's a whole thing I could get into, but I don't want to because we've been going on for a while. Uh, Jason, thanks for that comment. That's really, really good. It is your higher self speaking to you um, or God or you know, whatever. I don't, I don't impose my words on things. Um, you, by the way, I'm, I'm into the law of attraction and all that stuff, but I'm not like a purple flower woo woo, uh, kind of person. I'm into the woo woo and I can have a woo woo conversation with anybody, but like the way that I go about this is not like super duper woo. Um, but definitely I'm into the higher self. I'm into, I'm not really religious, but I'm definitely spiritual and I'm definitely into, uh, all of this stuff. So Jason, you're speaking my language there. Okay, if you set that voice aside, it can lead to a mental struggle inside. Yeah, dude, that's what. That's exactly what we're saying. It, it takes work. It is a daily thing. Wake up and oh yeah, I'm here. I'm I am this higher being in a thing, in a body, in a meat suit, and I gotta remember to stay connected. Otherwise, I just might get run over by everybody else's crap. And oh, Rena's here. Hi, Rena. Yes, Rena says yes. I must have said something smart, and Rena agreed, and that's why she said yes. So, Rena, you now get the booby prize because I'm going to end this now. And uh, thanks for jumping in there at the very last second. I appreciate that. Guys, have a great day. Uh, again, I really appreciate everybody sticking with me. This first week was a little bit figuring it out, but uh, I think we landed somewhere that we can we can we can run with now. So thank you so much, and uh, you know, uh, this week I'm going to be doing some some cool stuff, I, and I want I want to make this a place where we can share our art at whatever form it takes and learn from each other. And uh, so keep asking questions if you got them. Uh, keep looking for questions and give answers if you if you can. And uh, if if you if you haven't yet and you would like to, please uh, post a video or or a picture or something and introduce yourself. Uh, there's there's a lot of people here who have not yet done that, and if you would like to, uh, you're more than welcome to. If if not, you can lurk too. That's absolutely fine. But guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you sticking with me. Oh, and Blake just jumps in right under the thing, says hey, and now Blake, you get the booby prize. So Rena, sorry. Uh, I kept on talking. You don't get it. Uh, Blake, you get the booby prize. Wow, it was a good one today, too. Oh, that stinks, Rena. Oh, too bad. 
All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye.